0712 at total deliverance jeffersonville in nioc i was kind of didn't know what to say this morning i was sitting back there with brother egan and i heard brother Neville saying something and looking towards me and i said to brother egan is he calling me and he said he is and then here i'm up here to say something this morning i was thinking when i was the fan there where there draws the voice just seems to pull it right out when you're speaking it seems that the fan takes the voice right away i was hearing so testimony when i was in there to pray for the woman on the phone and the one who got the message forgot to put the city of the place we had to call from dr morrison's wife and i tell you what i done for all your all prayer and mine i laid hands on the phone and i pointed to the number wherever it was and asked the holy spirit to go to the woman so I think he'd hear that just the same as he would be if we would sing. And I just laid it down, and it might be that that's the way the Lord wanted it to sing. It might be it would be better like that. And then I heard the testimonies while I was in there of someone saying that Sister Rook had, I believe, Brother Neville said that she had a mental collapse. Like, let's hold on to God for that. Just remembering this one thing. God knows his own. He knows all about them. Can you hear all right in the back? If you can't, there's some empty seats up here. You can change if you wish to. And let's see, is this the main mic? Brother says, no, sir. This over here is the main mic. Okay. We'll see if you can get just a tiny bit closer. How about right around here, Jane? That should be just fine. And sometimes I get just a little hoarse. I've been preaching quite a bit. Is that better? Can you hear me better? And we certainly remember these in prayer and want to report a glorious meeting from down in and looking at sister rook i thought i was looking at a lady back here and i looked like her i thought surely i'm not talking double here i looked at someone looked like her towards the back she was in saint edward's hospital and so i claimed in tennessee almost california we had a glorious meetings the lord blessed greatly and many things that he did and we're happy for that happy we can come back to our own company reporting the goodness and the mercy of god that's the way they did in the bible i was appreciating by the neville or by the billers prayer how he prayed for the people and asking for help and mercy and if you will just look along and always everything that goes on you'll find there's something real and genuine about it and then when brother never come and brought these deacons and so forth up here to the platform to pronounce the blessings of god upon the church offering i had him speaking in his prayer to god about those men how that they prayed for one another and that does me go to hear that a pastor can pray over his deacons and the deacons pray back for the pastor when you see a church going into cooperation like that well something's fixing to move that's where the church has to be in order and it gave me just an idea for a text i was going to speak on the blessing of at kadesh and the refusal of the hearing of the report of the spies but then i changed my mind to something else then and now concerning healing i just got a little testimony i'd like to give i was in hopes i'd see my boy billy back there but he's got it in his pocket and bill is getting to be better in the meetings than he used to be was nervous upset and it kind of tell people oh go sit down go sit down see i'll give you a prayer card but i've noticed recently there's getting to be people in the meeting that he just feels so sorry for if he ain't got no prayer cards left then he'll put them in a room so i can go pray for them and such a thing happened at chicago the last time and i'd like to read that letter if he does come in i never get to see him he didn't know i was coming this morning over here and want the letter but i just thought of it when i thought of so much sickness and here's the way it is it's a satisfied letter that i was reading in the paper i never was told that where the papers was criticizing our robbers for praying for a woman who had diabetes and died and i now as an american i like to listen to the laws and the man who's in authority but i think that's not just I wonder if they are be willing to put in the paper all that robert Robert prayed for and got healed. That the doctors turned down. I wonder they swept it right back around one scene. They wouldn't do that. And then I think maybe that the devil has just muddled them up so that God was permitting it. That the day of the judgment, they'll have to answer for that. And I know of thousands of people that all robbers has prayed for that's been dying and they're well. So 
you see, they're unfair about it. They'll deliver their side, the critical side, but won't deliver the other side. Now the paper is supposed to keep the public up to date on events that happens. And I think if human beings are concerned with one another, if somebody gets healed, really healed, every paper in the United States ought to pack the article of it, but you can't hire them to do it. No, you take something like that there, they'll sneak and laugh at it and turn it back. And now if there's anything to criticize, it just goes to show that this nation is ready for judgment, right? And there's got to be judgment and there's no way to escape it. And they're only heaping fire upon their heads and so forth. And such a disunified to the principles, the paper, its principles is to inform the public of anything good or bad that's happening. And they are away from the principles. And when they are away from their principles, then they will not serve the purpose well. And that's the same way it is with the church. When the church is away from its principles, it can never serve the things well. We've got to stay together, got to be unified, we've got to be of one heart and one accord, or we'll never serve God or the people unless we are one heart and one accord. To stand with the principles of the Bible and the things that God has said that's right, we must always stand by them. Billy stuck into the room at Chicago, he, someone come to him, a woman with her husband with cancer on the lungs dying, and his wife was a polio victim in a wheelchair, and her trying to take care of a man that couldn't hardly stand up with cancer on his lung and Billy said to him, he said, I'm sorry, sir, said, I'll gladly give you a prayer card. And he said, but I haven't got another one left. And he said, well, all right, sonny. He said, that's all right. Said, we tried to get here, but it's so unhandy for us. Billy said, tell you what you do. Said, I'm going to get dad and I'm going to bring him in and I'll take him out. And I said, when I do, as soon as you hear his message, said, then you get your wife and you and get in the little room there where I pass through and I'll have him pray for you. Oh, he said, that's loyal son, that's good enough. See, there's an attitude, you see, good enough, that's fine, see. And that night, Billy, when he went back there, still against what he had said, that he had his brother-in-law, they would be bleeding with hemorrhages from the lungs, and his sister-in-law there was bleeding from the stomach with ulcers, and also they had come in and with them, kind of on the side of helping them get in. You have to watch, there'd be a whole room full, you see, but going through and praying for them, we get a letter back through the mail that that man has perfectly healed of that cancer of his lungs. The woman, the wife in the wheelchair, is up, going around just normal as she ever was. The man with the hemorrhages of the lungs from tuberculosis completely well, and his wife is well of the ulcers. Four of them healed straight. I wonder if the newspapers would be willing to print that. See, see, oh, but God still is God. He just does things in his own way, you know, and he's so good. We're so happy to know that he is God. We was talking the other morning about a little preacher that we know that used to go around pray for the sick and everything. And he went and prayed for a person in the hospital in Louisville and a tobacco case. The lady died. The little fellow said, well, there's no need. God ain't. There ain't no God. He'd keep his word. Said, I anointed her just like the Bible said, if he doesn't keep his word, he's not God. Said, it's just a book. Now, that would seem like that unless you know God, that's a part of the scriptures, but it's not all of the scripture. It's upon the basis of the faith of the individual, see? And I told my wife, I said, there's been so many things happen that I just know that there is. I don't know what's going to happen to me at the end. I may go to the same way if God ever moves his hand on of mercy from me. I'll go the same way, but as long as he'll keep his hand of mercy and guidance upon me, I'll go on by asked. Mid I said, Who was it in the room that morning after the vision of me seeing my little girl Sharon? By the way, the other day I like to fainted. I was sitting on the street, and you know my story of the vision of her after, and I looked coming by my side, and there came a young girl down the street here in Jeffersonville was just exactly like that vision. I just had to grasp my hands together, looked so much like that vision of my little Sharon. She was a young woman then. And after that vision, that morning, when in glory, I hope, was telling me, had her arm around my shoulder, saying, don't worry about us, Bill. We're better off. I was just trying to commit suicide. And she said, don't worry. Promise me you won't worry anymore. And I said, I can't promise it, Hope, because I worry. I can't help it. And... I come out of the vision standing in the dark room and not a vision, not an illumination, but her arm was still around me and she was patting me. I thought, wait a minute, this is not, I didn't know 
what to call it in them days a vision i just call it a trance i said this is her hand it's still there i said are you there hope she said bill promise me that you won't worry anymore about me and sharon cause i was at the end of the road i was ready to commit suicide i said i promise you and she hugged me and patted me by her hand and then i said hope where are you i got felt up till i got a hold of the little chain of the light and pulled it and i went around search through the every chair to see if you're sitting there he is god he's just as much god today as he was on the mount transfiguration when moses and elijah appeared he's still god we may go through lots of troubles and trials just remember there's someone who knows lights the way makes it real i do not know what's behind the curtain but i know one thing i'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling every day trying to live for that great event that will take place someday where i shall see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace that's the day i live for leaving those things behind which are i want to press on just keep going i want this tabernacle now that you are on your feet i want you to keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling whatever you do clean together be as clannish as you can be but always with an arm out to reach and get someone else to bring them in but in this faith that we are now preaching and honestly contending for don't you move one inch from it but for if you believe me to be a servant this is a program of god it will never be in the majority it will always be in the minority always has and always will be but remember it is written fear not little flock it's your father's good will to give to you the kingdom now there's a group of officers of the church deacons trustees sunday school superintendent pastors as a church is set in order and you the people elected these officers and this pastor i'm just a general overseer seeing it goes on right and to give advice and so forth you are the one who likes your pastor you like your trustees you like your deacons you like every office that is in this church you the people in it's your duty to stand by those men see for they'll make mistakes they are mortal they're just men that will make mistakes but if the president of the united states make a mistake we don't throw him out as president we forget about it and move on that's the way we want to do our church now i was listening to him pray a few minutes ago for those deacons and to hear back their testimony at the door from the trustees how that with one accord you all are now stay that way now you remember stand by these trustees deacons and pastor and remember when you get this together remember that it's the devil's business to see that that's broke up now it always has been and it always will be but you stand by officers and that was a talk that i was going to make and then i have here also some something for the bulletin board this morning about the meeting of the boards and the authority and it will be in the bulletin board and i got a copy of brother robertson who is a chairman of the trustees and i got a copy from brother collins i think who acts as a chairman of the deacon board and now all these offices are set according to scripture and they must have the scriptural rules of what they must do and therefore the trustees has an office of their own and the deacons has an office of their own the sunday school superintendent has an office of his own and the pastor is the head of the flock now each one of the these has things in common and i think that your meeting should not be together but it should be as each office because the deacons has nothing to say to the trustees unless they got some business to present to them and vice versa the trustees is over the financing things of the building they have nothing with the deacons the deacons are the policemen of the church and the assistants of the pastor and the trustees is a holding of all the property the trustees have nothing to do with the spiritual end of it and the deacon has nothing to do with the financial end of it therefore it must be and the sunday school superintendent is over his sunday school so i've got it all wrote typed out to be on the bulletin board and then we are also going to in a frame and the doctrine of it, that the church stands for and have it framed in here in the church what we stand for the principles the doctrine of the church now to be a church we've got to have a doctrine we don't draw down any sticks and say we just go this far we go out just as far with fellowship with everybody and that god will let us go in his scriptures with the people and i'll stick together be of one accord one heart and move on for god that's the way god wants us to do but let us pray and then open the word oh precious lord we are now about to approach the divine word of the reading of his this word may holy spirit interpret to us that which have the need of and let us speak lord and act and live knowing that we are all children by grace as you have called us may there be a fellowship in this church seeing that we are just about to emerge into the 
some great move we feel of bringing up other ministers to go out into the fields of where if you shall send me into different parts of the world there to establish the faith and to have a minister ready and willing and trained to take over and may the faith that was once delivered to the saints for we are currently standing for become a circle around the world granted lord may this little weed pile as it was one day we dedicated it to you may there be a church rise up here lord that out of it shall go ministers and evangelists and teachers and missionaries to all the parts of the world we would ask this morning a special blessing for our brother and sister striker who suffered now and we know that we are all put to this test every son that comes to god must be chased and tried and if we give up easy and turn back then we are illegitimate children and are the children of god give brother and sister striker strength and power to stick to their post of duty if they have to beg what food they eat let the hand of blessing be upon them for we know not but it might be through that very effort that you will show the native of africa what a real question is granted lord now let it be all done according to the will bless this pastor brother neville we pray lord that you'll make him a shepherd of the flock as you have in the past and we will not forget this lovely little wife who is very sick the enemy would like to leave brother neville with that burnt group of children with no mother but we stand and place by faith the blood of the lord jesus between the that enemy and our sister may your spirit lord be great upon her knowing that all women are ordained to walk down through this valley of darkness of this age but we pray that you will be with her bless those little children she'll be nervous now and fretful but may the holy ghost be at the door of the mercy at all times for that family bless our trustee board our brother wood and our brother egan with the robertson and all the others lord deacons trustees and all that's associated in the church we pray lord that you let them serve their time with holiness and righteousness bless those lord who has served in the times past and we pray that you'll continue to be with all of us that we will be known as the church of unity and spirit and the love of god we pray that you'll divide to us the word as we have need as we read out of the written word for we ask it in jesus name amen and in praying i was thinking that as we were blessing of all the asking blessings for modern a new board of trustees and so forth i was thinking of our brother fleeman and brother detsman and them sitting here who has served well on before and we want to be thankful to god for the loyal service may the lord ever be with them and bl to bless them and help them i want to read before just remember now the bulletin board and so forth and the coming meetings and we're happy to have with us this morning well i might say it like this a man who has been very precious to me in the times past and precious now a good brother fred swordman from uh, his Saskatchewan, Canada, who is here to sojourn with us in our nation as surgeon, but in a fellowship of beloved brother by the Fred Swarthman sitting there. He manages a campaign for me when I was in Canada. And another precious brother, who is also formerly a Canadian, which is a businessman and can prove to the world that you can't outgive God. He and his buddy from the foundation for finances of building a place or for a foreign mission a foundation and they called me to oakland for a meeting and said they had the money they'd sponsor it all in their foundation brother fred and i tried that for some money that brother fred had that i would not take as an individual so then we decided we would give it to the canadian people and not even take an, up an offering but it didn't do go so good the meetings are fine but because we didn't take up an offering i don't care the church is worth a hundred billion dollars you still owe it to go to take up an offering that's part of the worship and you rob that as much as i've been against money and things like that i find out when a man is wrong you might as well admit you're wrong because brother fred and i seen it pan out not so good and by the borders when i left fred and come down to uh at oakland i said don't you do it you just pass a collection plate, take an offering, whatever it is, pull it back in your foundation for another little someone. And before the service is closed, but the border and your friends come to me and said, as much as you put in the meeting, is already took up. And then a few days ago, he made arrangements for a meeting in San Jose, California, where he had some, I guess, 60 or 70 churches in the valley of all different faiths, all cooperating. We had a wonderful meeting.
and turning back again november we're happy to have you with us but the borders back there and these many strangers maybe to you all but they have been precious brothers to me out in the fields contending honestly for the faith that we're standing for god bless you brother we're glad to have you this morning in the little old tabernacle here it's not so much to look upon but there's something here that we know that god lives here you see we're so happy for that and there is other precious brethren if i had to time to mention that's with that today now i am anticipating and praying that in the next few days the lord willing i want to go feeling led i haven't made the announcement the next meeting to ohio to be with brother sullivan on the campaign grounds within a short time it's only about a hundred miles up there i guess june something like that to be a fine trip you haven't planned your vacation if the lord continues to lead a very fine man and you appreciate brother sullivan a great deal just uh, he's a mayor of the city he was just ex-mayor and just an old-fashioned kentuckian that's all i can say about him when i meet met him the other day we was both raised down there in the mountains of kentucky he said to me have you still got your ass surfeit ladder around your neck billy now you know what uh how kentucky he is now let's turn in re no regards to my kentucky brother here but the jeffries and so forth i'm a kentuckian too you know i'll tell you one thing we are we are not kentuckians or neither we americans we are pilgrims and strangers we are seeking a city to come now for reading this let's read out of the book of exodus for a few minutes i wish read the from the 23rd chapter and the 20th verse to the 23rd inclusive and i want to take a text from this morning from like this of rather a total deliverance and i won't be long speaking now while i was waiting for you to turn to your book and chapter behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee to the place which i have prepared beware of him obey his voice provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is with him i'm sure that the congregation knows who this angel was my name is in him and if thou will indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak then will i be an, an enemy unto the enemies and an adversary unto the adversaries for my angel shall go before thee and bring thee and to the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hevites, and Jebusites, and I'll cut them off.